I'm back again and we are going to do a part two on this uh, regulator performance circuit board that I made. Uh, as I discussed in a previous video, we have uh, seven different linear regulators on this circuit board and we previously measured them for their output noise and now we are going to measure their uh, ripple uh, rejection. I've got a lot of equipment running and uh, there's several different fans running in the in this test equipment so hopefully you can hear me okay and we'll just have to bear with the uh, background noise. I have a function generator here that is tied to a DC coupled audio amplifier this is an amplifier I made a long time ago out of a National Semiconductor LM12 CLK. Uh, it's actually a pretty sweet little part. It's a uh, power operational amplifier that uh, I think it was rated at 150 watts. And uh, so all you have to do is provide a couple of resistors and capacitors around it. And um, you've got yourself a fully functioning audio amp. I have this uh, DC coupled. There are no uh, capacitors on the input of this amplifier so I can pass a DC signal and amplify it through this guy. I next then have the uh, regulator board that has the six different uh, linear regulators. I have a 100 ohm load and then I have my um, audio analyzer. As I've stated here this uh, amplifier has a gain of 12 and so what I've done is I've set my function gener generator up to have a DC offset and there's uh, the appropriate DC offset multiplied by 12 gives me an output voltage of 8 volts and I have set up ripple to be 1 volt peak to peak you know driving uh, the <laughs> input to the regulators with 8 volts DC with a varying 1 volt. What I'm going to do is I'm going to vary this frequency and we're going to see how these uh, regulators perform. A little bit more detail about the setup. This is my function generator. That output flows to this guy down here and this is a audio, the audio amplifier made out of the LM12 uh, operational amps. The output of this comes out this cable here and goes to this guy. This is what the signal looks like uh, coming out of the audio amplifier. This is my uh, ground and we've got this line is indicating approximately 8 volts and we can see the 1 volt ripple. This is the audio analyzer and I'm currently measuring uh, the input to the regulators and you can see that we are reading 358 millivolts. That is going to be the one volt peak to peak and so uh, if we have that and then we take the RMS of that, that equals the 358 millivolts so that reading looks good and we can see that the analyzer is able to track the ripple that it's uh, 100 Hertz uh, ignore the generator we're not using the generator and I have the band input bandwidth of the analyzer set to uh, respond between 22 Hertz and 22 kilohertz here's the setup I'm just holding it uh, up here for a minute so you can see the connections. We have the uh, DC input. I've got a scope hooked up to the input. My audio analyzer is connected to this BNC cable. And right now you can see the input LED is turned on and the output LED is turned on. And we're uh, connected to this first linear regulator. Here's our first regulator. This is the TLV1117. 
and we can see that the uh, audio analyzer is picking up uh, approximately 530 microvolts of noise and the output of the regulator is attenuating the one uh, the 100 Hertz ripple so much that the analyzer cannot track onto the uh, signal so we're just gonna plow through a bunch of these and see what it does this is the LP 2985 interesting that it has uh, the ripple rejection is worse than the first regulator but if we remember from my previous video the actual just output noise was uh, very low with the uh, LP2985 so that's an interesting result this is the LM317 this is the ADR4525 78M05 7805. We're now going to look at a 1 kilohertz input. This is back to the TLV1117. LP2985. LM317. And I'm just going to go through these without uh, video videoing the rest of them because that will make this video too long. We're now looking at a 10 kilohertz ripple. I believe that's all the tests I'm going to perform on uh, this circuit board for this video. It was a interesting test and we've got some interesting results I believe. Uh, I'll show them right here and I'll also show them on my uh, desktop so they'll be easier to read. Here is the summary for this video. I designed a custom circuit board with seven uh, different linear regulators that I have used in my past projects. Uh, only six of them were operational. I goofed on this uh, regulator here with a uh, uh, layout that was not proper. I have the TLV1117 by TI, a LP2985 also by TI, LM317, a ADR4525. This is more of a voltage reference but can also be used as a low power quiet uh, uh, linear regulator. This is the Linear Tech LT3065, a 78M05, and a Jelly Bean 7805. Uh, note that all of these regulators had the exact same uh, input decoupling capacitors, a electrolytic in parallel with the ceramic, and all of the regulators also had the exact same output coupling capacitors. Each one was enabled and disabled independently so that none of the other uh, circuits would affect the performance of the one being tested. Here are the results. The results in TAN are from the previous video, and that is the uh, noise output of the regulator. And just to summarize, we found that the LP2985 basically had the best performance for a general purpose regulator if we discount the uh, voltage reference uh, part. Uh, as we can see in the green, which is uh, this video, where we are testing the ripple rejection, the LP2985 performed the worst, which is uh, interesting. The best all-around performance, I would say, for this video, ripple rejection, was the LM317. If I am doing a design that um, you know isn't concerned so much about the noise, I'll probably just stick with my LM317s. They work well. If I'm concerned with uh, noise, I might use the LP2985, but uh, I might only use this in a DC 
you know, uh, battery powered or maybe something that I know that has a good steady uh, clean DC input. Maybe a combination if you were looking for a, a quiet design would be to use your pre-regulation with an LM317 since it has a very high voltage input and then you could follow that with a uh, LP2985. I don't know, just uh, just some thoughts. Well, that's about it. Thanks.